So yes, tonight we're here to talk about young adult literature, and with me on the stage we have an assembled a wonderful panel. I will introduce them from the far side over here. So first we have Ma Megan Honig, the Teen Collection Specialist for the New York Public Library. <laughs> we have Stacey Barney sitting next to her, an editor at Penguin Books. And then in the red dress is Alvina Ling, a senior editor from Little Brown. <laughs> Next to her is Caitlin Bluey from Athenium, an imprint of Simon & Schuster. She's the executive editor there. <laughs> and finally, we have Amy Bowland, the executive director of technology at the Hewitt School and also a blogger for School Library Journal. So please, give a round of applause for our panel. Let me grab my questions. <laughs> so, I know you all have a little bit of the questions that I'm preparing to ask for the evening, but before we get started on the really heavy issues, let's go ahead and start off lightly, shall we? Um, one of the things that is always so fascinating about young adult literature is the variety of directions that it goes. Everything seems to happen there first and then get picked up in other areas. So. For the panel, what's the most exciting thing to, for you that's happening in young adult literature right now? And you might have to turn on your microphone, sorry. And I think I'll start with Stacy, because it looks like your microphone's on. Is it? Oh, no. Okay. Hello? Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I think for me, the most exciting thing that's happening in young adult literature is that mm -hmm. adults are reading it, and that it's, it's getting um, a lot more, a lot more significance is being put on the young adult world than it had previously, and, and that's exciting. And it allows um, us as editors and, and even people in marketing publicity to do more and to appeal to a wider audience. So that's exciting. Thank you. Wonderful. I'll be back. Sure, I'll just jump off that. I, um, I think going along with that, the, uh, that adults are reading YA. Um, I feel like anything goes now in YA. Um, I'm an author in the audience, so I'm working with on a young adult Dexter. Dexter for kids, we sometimes say. Um, <laughs> it's really for teens, so it's appropriate for this discussion. Um, you know, I, I work on some crazy kind of neo noir mysteries. I mean, I feel like in terms of content, sophistication, language, um, it's just a really exciting time right now. I feel like um, people are pushing the boundaries. And, so. Okay. And I'm finding that young people are being encouraged to read more and in as a result of that, they're writing a lot more, which is really, really um, interesting to see. And, I don't know, this one, uh, there, there we go. go, there we go. I don't have your job, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> um, an offshoot of this that I find equally interesting is how many teen communities there are online to talk about books, and it's because they're loving the books, or they're hating the books, but they're reacting to the books, and they have a place to talk about the books, which means more teens are going to the books because of this. So it, 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 it's sort of two worlds merging to make one huge, fabulous one, which is great for all of us in, who publish in the teen category or promote the teen books. Okay, and last but not least. Last but not least. Am I beyond what's a coming out story and move toward what kind of teens now are experiencing. And I feel like we're really hitting that and really branching out it, at least for the lesbian and gay stories. And there's a little more work to be done, but it's it's exciting. Okay, yay. I'm, actually, I want to jump back to a point that you were just mentioning, Amy, um, and a little bit with Caitlin as well. As, we, as teens read and, and are encouraged to write, there's a whole the whole youth-generated content area is just such an interesting and engaging section. And I wonder if you can speak about that, especially as it relates to examples of fan fiction and also for encouraging um, our future authors. Well, what I, what I should have prefaced the writing piece with is the fact that they're writing for social and social mediums that um, has given rise to their interests within their own communities. They're developing these communities and 
these communities are becoming a part of their everyday lives, and I think it's so important what the, what the librarians are doing, which is kind of spearheading and guiding the students through the process, um, which, again, is exciting. Um, and then the second point, um, which, could you repeat for me, because I just lost my train. <laughs> Sure, tying back to uh, youth-generated content, inspired future authors, and especially sort of that social world of fan fiction. Yes, the, certainly the niche content and that movement has taken off in, in more ways than we can ever um, imagine. But the fan fiction is also exciting for the students because they're they're taking uh, they're taking the lead in many of these arenas that, at least in my generation, we didn't we didn't have. I, I would have been scared to death to write a letter to an author when I was, you know, 14, 15, 16 years old. That never would have happened. But thinking if if there were the opportunities that there are now back then, I would have been much braver about that. Um, but to your question, what is also fascinating to see are the number of teens out there who are creating their own review pages and and. Literally, there, there, there's SLJ, and then there's Tammy Wachowski with her great list of all of her reviews, and the hits those kids get is remarkable, and the power they have to spread the word about the books they love or don't love is, is becoming more and more astounding and something we have to take very carefully into consideration in any of our own marketing and publicity and publishing. Wonderful. Uh, jumping back onto our communities, uh, genre fiction has always been sort of the, the community within the young adult world that exists. And recently we've seen a lot of genre fiction, specifically paranormal, um, especially romance, those, those publishing events include at least four or five of titles. Um, and I was wondering if you can speak to sort of that dominance of genre right now and are we seeing the end of paranormal anytime soon? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think, you know, we've talked about it at, within our publishers, and we're, we're starting to, as editors, we're starting, well, I'm starting to get a little bit of paranormal romance fatigue in terms of submissions. It's just all the same. Um, but when something is a paranormal romance or paranormal fiction and it just like, really stands out as being fresh and original, then you know, we just really embrace that. Um, but I think most of you might have seen that Barnes & Noble has a new section now in the team, um, specifically paranormal romance and also adventure, fantasy and adventure. So I mean, I think that's a sign that, well, I mean, I think that will keep, that will further the trend and keep it going for a while. And, and it's offshooting other trends. I mean, I think dystopian fantasy was a word that didn't exist five years ago, but it, I think it branched from the paranormal paranormal and then trying a different type of writing and suddenly there was room and excitement for something so different because of the difference that the amount of great books coming out of paranormal fantasy and paranormal romance have created. Um, I would also just say 